everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the tutorial for the last effect I uploaded. If you didn't get a chance to check out that performance, I will link it in the description. The cards I used for the last uh, performance, and I'm going to use for this tutorial, are the Bicycle Mystical. I will link that deck review in the description. Now, the way I did this was my slight variation. At the end, I will also show you the original way as well. So, this is pretty much impromptu, but I did one little thing which isn't impromptu, but you could do it impromptu as well, which I will show you at the end. So, what I did was I decided on what card I was going to force on the participant. Now, if you've seen the performance video, you will know I did the Eight of Spades, meaning that the Eight of Spades can be somewhere in the deck. It doesn't matter. I took out the Soulmate to the Eight of Spades, in this case, the Eight of Clubs. If you have no idea what Soulmates are, I will link my video in the description. I just took this card as a prediction, put it in the box, and now you are all set. You can go up to your participant and you can have them shuffle the deck as much as they would like. This is a totally, you know, shuffle deck. After you get the cards back, you're going to spread these out and you're going to be explaining that all the cards are shuffled. What you're going to be doing is looking for the Eight of Spades. So in this case, you see the Eight of Spades here. You are then going to count to the left three cards. So one, two, three. And remember that card. In this case, the Ten of Diamonds. So now you can scoop up everything. And I say here, let me show you even more now that all of the cards are shuffled. And you can say, you know... Depending on how used the deck is, some of the cards may actually stick together. So let's make sure that that isn't the case. You can actually see each and every card. And this is a good way because now, if you aren't sure about that third card over, or technically the fourth card, well now you can confirm to yourself. So you're going to start showing like this. All of the cards are different. Once you come to the Eight of Spades, don't stop, don't miss a beat or anything. <clears throat> you could do one of two things. You could either count the Eight as one, two, three, four, and remember the Ten of Diamonds. Or you could push over the Eight and then go one, two, three, and remember the Ten of Diamonds. So either way, you're going to need to remember that fourth card. I like to put my index finger on it, and then I show the rest of the cards. After they have seen all the cards, what I'm going to do is take that card next to that Ten of Diamonds, in this case the Jack of Hearts, and I'm going to split them. So the Jack is going to be on the top of the one pile, or when you turn it over, it will be on the bottom of the one pile. But either way, that 10 will be on top of the other pile. So you split the cards there. You turn over the cards that don't have the 10. Then you put these on top. So now you have their card fourth from the top. And the next move you're going to do that really does the effect is the Prophecy move by Bill Simon. I think I have a tutorial on this. I think it's by Bill Simon. Anyway, it's the Prophecy move. I, if I do have a tutorial, it'll be linked in the description. What you explain is you're going to start spreading through the cards and you want them to touch the back of one card. Now, when doing this, you want to make sure that the top half of the cards, okay, you have quite a bit in your hand because this is going to be a bit of a cut and this is what's going to sell the effect. You'll actually see what I mean. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they go through, and let's say they touch a card near the bottom. That might be a little better, just because you want a lot of cards on top. But a quick walkthrough of the Prophecy move is you push off this card. 
You take all the cards in your other hand, so the top half, you turn your wrist over, you put these on top of that card, you then use your thumb to clip that card you pushed off, you turn your wrist back over, and you put this bottom half on top. And that's the prophecy move. If you need a tutorial, check the description. It should be there. But now you've spread out the cards and you say, okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to only use the cards below the card that you touch. So that means we can get rid of this top half. So you're going to set down the seven, spread out the bottom half, and you're going to talk about spell counting. Now, you can check the original video in the description if you need a better explanation of spell counting. But really, you're going to be spelling this card, and when you spell the card, you're going to be using those cards to find more cards, really. And the reason I mentioned that you want a pretty big packet is because you're going to be spelling the value and the suit. So in this case, the seven of diamonds. So if I had, let's say, around this many cards, you you could maybe spell seven. Okay, so you can, but you can't spell diamonds. You have to start back at the top, and that really isn't going to look good. But with all these cards, well, yeah, now you can spell seven, and then you can spell diamonds. So I hope that makes sense. But you want them to touch a card a little more than half, but near the bottom, just so the top half has a lot of cards. And I think I have actually made a video based off of this move, I will call it, sort of like the endings. So in this case, we know we have seven and the card is fourth from the top. So how are you going to spell seven and get to that card? You're going to start with the seven and you're going to go S-E-V-E-N. <clears throat> And because you added in the seven, that fourth card is going to be the eight of spades. And this works with all of the other cards as well. So let's go through here really quick and just see if we have every single card here. Just so I can give you a quick rundown. And if I can find my video, I will link that in the description as well. Well, I found some of them. Okay. And we need two, I think two more. So ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. We need a two, a queen, and an eight. And we should be good there. So two, eight, queen. Okay, so I will talk about this part at the end, but you say, okay, so we're going to actually spell count using the seven, so we're going to go, starting with the, with the seven, and if you want the participant to do this, just guide them through it, so you go S-E-V-E-N, you always want to land on that fourth card, then you say, okay, we're going to spell diamonds, so D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. And I think it does look better if you land on the card how you landed on the seven. Because if you land on this card for the seven, and then for the diamond, you push it over and go with the next card, that may look a little weird. But either way, you have the two cards, and now you're just going to really do a magician's choice. You know the eight is here. So you're going to be actually, you're going to pick up the rest of the deck now, and you're going to be doing a dribble. If you don't know how to dribble, I will link that in the description. But your pattern is going to be this. So I want you to pick up one of those cards. Now, if they pick up the card that has the eight, while you dribble, okay, you say, okay, I want you to pick up one of those cards and place it on the box. And then with this other card, you can have them call out stop while dribbling, place the card in, and reveal the ending. <clears throat> but if they tap the card that's not the eight, you say, okay, I want you to pick up one of those cards and toss it into the deck. 
and that's really all it is. So if they touch the eight while you're dribbling, your patter is okay. I want you to pick up one of those cards. Let's say they pick up this one. You say place it on the box and throw the other card into the deck. They touch that card. So I want you to pick up one of the cards. Let's say this one. I want you to call out stop. You throw it in the deck and you go on. So, you say, okay, so I want you to pick up one of those cards, let's say this one, and I want you to call stop or throw it in the deck. They throw it here, and you're all set. Now you can reveal this however you want. I like to recap the entire effect, which I'm not gonna hear. And then you say, okay, turn over that card, the Eight of Spades. You can then introduce them to soulmates if they don't know what it is. Have them go to the box, explain this has been here since the beginning of the effect. They open it up and it matches the eight of clubs. That is the effect. <clears throat> now I want to go through really quick here actually each of the outcomes for this effect here. So I'm going to add a couple more just to play it safe. And this is why I did the tutorial video in a separate video. Otherwise, that one video will be way too long. <clears throat> so here it is for each and every suit or card they could possibly get. So if they have the Ace of Clubs, We'll put this away just so it doesn't distract you. If they have the Ace of Clubs, you say, okay, I want you to push away the Ace, and now I want you to spell Ace, one card for each letter, A, C, E, and you land on the 8. So really, you just want to land on that fourth card each time. So whether it has three or four letters, you can land on the fourth card easy. If it has five letters or even six, I don't know if any cards have six letters, then you'll want to count that one card. <clears throat> For the two, <clears throat> excuse me, you push it away and you say, I want you to spell two, T-W-O, and you land on the eight. Now, if they have a three, this is when you're going to have them use three, but they're going to stop on that last letter for three. You say, okay, start spelling three with three, T-H-R-E-E, -E, stop, that's, that's your card, because it's the fourth card down. If they have a four, and really, for some of these, you could probably substitute in spelling, because for the four, they could either go, starting with the four, F-O-U-R, and the next card is theirs, they could put away the four and go F-O-U-R, or they could even count for one, two, three, four. They could even count four with the four. So the four is an interesting one. A uh, five, you're going to do the same thing. So you say, okay, starting with the five, F-I-V-E, there you go. <clears throat> six, you have, you say, okay, push away the six and go S-I-X, there's your card. For seven, actually we went over seven, so we're not going over him again. For 8, you're going to start with the 8, so you go E-I-G-H-T, and you're just laying on that 4th card each time. For the 9, okay, so it works either way. You can either start with the 9 and go N-I-N-E, -N -N okay, so... Or you could say, okay, push away the 9 and go N-I-N-E. For the 10, you're going to push them away and you're going to go T-E-N and the next card is theirs. 
Now, for the jack, you're going to spell the jack, so J-A-C-K, and the next card is theirs. Or you could put away jack, and you can go J-A-C-K. The queen, you're going to have to start it with, so Q-U-E-E-N. And finally, for the king, just like jack, nine, and four, you can either start with the king, K-I-N-G, or put him away and go K-I-N-G. Either way, you land on the eight of spades. So that was a quick run through of each of the cards. If I can find a similar video that uses that same technique, I will call it. I will link it in the description. So here is an impromptu way to do that variation impromptu. And then I will show you the original way impromptu. I'm not going to perform it, but I will talk you through it. So they're going to shuffle the deck. You're going to go ahead and spread these out. And you're just going to go ahead and look and just you know, just decide on one card that you're going to force on your participant. And while you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure that the soulmate is in the deck too. So if I want to do this quickly, I may look really quick for pairs of cards that I could possibly use. So when going through, you could use the two red fours because they're close to each other. You could use... You know, the two red tens, you could use the two red queens. Okay, you want to do stuff like that. And once you decide on one, you say, okay, I'm going to make a prediction. Obviously, move this up some. Obviously, everything is going to be like this because you don't want them to see the secret. But you're going to decide on one card. Let's say in this case, the four of diamonds, and you're just going to move it right to the top. So cut right to the top of the deck, and then you're going to find the soulmate, the four of hearts, put him down, and then just cut three cards to the top of the deck, turn everything over, and you are all set, because that card is fourth from the top. So when you say I'm going to look for a prediction and you're moving the cards around a lot, they're not going to know what to expect. So it's very easy to go ahead and, you know, take out a prediction and then you can act like you're deciding on whether to keep that prediction or another or change it out. You can up jog a card, look at it, put it down, cut some cards. It really doesn't matter. You just want that soulmate fourth from the top. And then that other soulmate on the table. So the original way you can do this is simple. You're going to decide on a card you're going to force, okay? So in this case, let's just say we have the three of clubs. Before you start the effect, you're going to write on a piece of paper three of clubs. You're then going to put it inside the box and have the three somewhere in the deck. So then when you start the effect, you're just going to cut that. You're going to have the deck shuffled, show all the cards are different, cut the three fourth from the top, and then go on with the effect. And then when they have the three of clubs on the table, they can take the piece of paper out of the box, and it reads three of clubs. And that is the original very the original way. Just uses a piece of paper with three of clubs. If you wanted, it may be a little too much. You could maybe put down a prediction. But I think a piece of paper actually works good enough. And that is the tutorial for this effect. So I hope you really enjoy this one. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time with a new video. Bye.